like the good doctor said, my name's Alice. I was there, what, two months ago? Two or three months ago, I was there for the two-week program as well. I live in Missouri and uh, I have suffered through it. By the way, this is my friend, Michaela. She's here for support. Just wanted to say that. Um, but I'm, so I'm 24 years old and I've dealt with it my whole life. I knew from a very young age. I think I actually want to read my submission email that I wrote. Um, sure. We'll kind of say a lot. Okay, so hello, my name is Alice Mahinda. I'm 24 years old. I live in Kansas City, Missouri, and I'm single. I've been dealing with vaginismus my whole life. I started my period at nine and could never be able to insert a tampon when I was of age, but other girls could. And I thought it was because I was a virgin, but so were they. So from nine to 17, I couldn't be able to, without honestly thinking that I was dying. It was so painful. I started to know something was wrong as I got older and other girls would pass around tampons and I couldn't figure out why they were so free, why they weren't so freaked out at the idea of something going inside of them. At 18, I started doing research and found vaginismus and it all clicked. So I ordered dilators and a book on vaginismus and I thought, finally, I'm going to get over this. I was living at home at the time and I grew up in a very religious Christian home. And with my dad being a pastor, sex was never talked about except at nine when I started my period. And all my mom told me was to never let a boy touch me down there or you'll get pregnant. Sex was for marriage and husbands and women are supposed to give it when asked by our husbands because it's our job to please the men. So I hid it from my parents, which made me more anxious because if they found out the consequences were unthinkable. I tried rushing through the steps and gave up because it still hurt. At 18, I thought I lost my virginity. It was horrible. He shoved into me and I was so tense the whole time and it hurt. And I kept thinking it has to start feeling good, but it didn't. The next time I tried having sex, he couldn't get in me no matter how hard he tried. It was like he was hitting a brick wall. It was so painful. Probably the worst pain I've ever felt. It felt like a burning wall that was blocking him. I have tried to have sex four times since. It was so painful and I bled all the time. And I thought, and they thought I was on my period, which I wasn't. I had surgery at 18 because I suffered from ovarian cyst and had to get one removed. And they went through my vagina and the thought of a knife going inside of my vagina absolutely freaked me out. I started doing my research again a month ago. This was back then. And remembered seeing a story on YouTube at 18 where the ladies cured a Muslim American woman on strange sex. So I looked it up again and ordered dilators and a book. I realized I need professional help. I suffer from anxiety and serious depression. I keep thinking I'm gonna end up alone because I did something to deserve this and God is punishing me. And I'm not even that religious anymore. I feel alone because every woman I know talks about sex and how it's the greatest feeling in the world. And I lie and agree with made up stories so they don't know how broken I am inside about this. I really need your help, please. I'm so alone and I have no one to talk to about this. I feel like I'm less of a woman because of this and I can't do the one thing that's given to us as pleasure. Please, I hope you can help. Thank you, Alice. Oh, and that just makes me wanna cry because now I'm such a different person then. And just like the first couple had said, like the doctors don't understand my anxiety. Like I said, I started my period at so young. I was nine. I didn't even know what was happening. No one else in elementary had started it. And so I told my teacher and she explained and I had no idea what was going on. I told my mom and of course it was the like simple, like don't play with boys. Again, we re recess. So a boy ended up touching me. I ran to my teacher that I was pregnant because I didn't know what was going on. Um, but the level of anxiety was so undescribable because I would try to use a tampon like in nine and 10 when I finally figured out what it was and I could never get it in. It would just hover outside of my vagina because the thought of it going inside of me, petrified, not even like fear, not even like it petrified me. Like I, I want to get that across. Like it's not, even though they say it's in your head, it is, but it isn't. It's the thought that I'm dying, like it's almost as equal to that. And um, never could be able to uh, 
And I held on to this information till again, I when I turned 18, I ended up seeing that YouTube video and I watched it and I went online and I watched the women's therapy center and I said, this is too good to be true. It felt like it was like selling the like lose 83 pounds in two and a half days. It just, it felt like there was like a gimmick and there was something behind it. Cause I'm like, there is no way that these women were cured even in two weeks or whatever it is. There is no way. Cause I'm probably the worst case they have ever dealt with. Like I could never be able to do it. And even when I tried having like the thought of having sex, great. But the, when it got to it, I could not do it. It just felt like a wall and it was blocked. Like, and the burning pain is undescribable. And I'm like, and I've tried shoving it. Like I've tried everything. And I finally reached out and I got a text back. I mean, an email back within seconds. And I was shocked. I was like, this, who am I? Like they've been on TV. I'm like, who is little old me in Missouri? Like, I didn't think that I would get a response back. And I got a response back and it, it completely, it completely changed my life. And so since I'm in Missouri, I went into the two week program and my first day I was in the room and I started bawling my eyes out, bawling. And Dr. Lauren walked in and she was like, oh, you're going to be a fun one. And I was like, ah, and because I mean, the fear of like seeing everything. And I'm like, I, like I said, I bought the dilators. I've done the books. I've read the research. I said, what difference are they going to be able to do that I haven't tried? Because it, it's just not possible. And I think within my fifth day, I was already getting a gyno exam and I was sh shocked. Like I, I, my mind was blown and they even wanted to send me off a little bit sooner within less than two weeks because I had done so well and I was so shocked and ended up coming home, did a, oh God, what is it called? A gyno, yeah, gyno exam. And I, the doctor put in the, the, the tool and I just started laughing and he was like, are you okay? Cause this is not a normal response. And I was just so excited to have something going in there and the, just talking with him and it being so comfortable and relaxed. And I called Dr. Ross after just bawling and she's like, I had no doubts you could be able to do it. It's just beautiful. And I ended up finding out from my exam that I have a retroverted uterus and um, I had to get a vaginal ultrasound to be able to look at my uterus. And the fact that I was even able to do that, even as she inserted that, I it was just laughter. It was just joy. And um, I tried tampons and they don't work, not necessarily because they're not able to go in. I have just ended up trying um, a menstrual disc, which has really helped a lot. And when I was actually at my doctor's office, he, my gynecologist, he, he's, uh, he's a male and I told him about it, kind of what was going on. And he was like, oh, sweetie, like all you have to do is just find a, a sweet, sweet gentleman and make sweet, slow love to you. And that will just cure it. And I was like, well, let me call the doctors and tell her to close her up because he figured it out. Like, <laughs> that was the answer all along. And it just, it was so frustrating because I think of all the women who have gone to their doctors or gone to their gynecologist and broken it down thinking that they can solve it because I promise you, I wanted this bad. Like I just wanted to feel normal and I felt so alone and so different and freaky. And I, I just, and again, I blamed because of my, how I grew up and I'm like, it's because I was a good girl and it's because I went to church and it's because of God. And if I hadn't done that, and I mean, it, it just, these women have changed my life. I'm still in contact with them today. We text almost on a weekly basis. We zoom, like I, they have completely changed my life. I held on to this information from 18 to 24 and I was seven years and because I was like, it's not real, but I promise you it's real. You're going to be able to do it. Like I said, I am single. I don't have a partner, but the fact that I'm able to 
since I've had my period twice now, I've been able to put in a menstrual disc. I've been able to try tampons. Um, and it's the giddy feeling ever. This was just two months ago. So it's just the giddiest feeling in the world to like slide my finger in there and pull out my disc. I'm like, my finger's going in. Like it's the little things because it's not just about sex. It's, I was, like I said, I have ovarian cyst. And so I'm able now to do vaginal ultrasounds and stuff like that. So it's go for it. Don't hold on to it. I'm thankful that I went when I did, but, um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say. <laughs>